The FBI has some splaining to do. Three FBI whistleblowers today testifying to a House panel on the weaponization of the government, accusing the agency of retaliation after they spoke out against the politicized FBI. Watch. Working as an FBI special agent was my dream job. My whistleblowing was apolitical and in the spirit of upholding my oath. Nonetheless, the FBI cynically elected to close ranks and attack the messenger. My family and I have been surviving on early withdrawals from our retirement accounts, while the FBI has ignored my request for approval to obtain outside employment. I never swore an oath to the FBI. I swore an oath to the Constitution. Do you believe that the FBI is purposefully hostile to you for that reason, to keep agents from speaking up? Yes. Yes, that question. Yes. I can't disagree with them. Republicans say it's further proof of institutional rot and anti-conservative bias. This morning, ahead of the hearing, committee chair Jim Jordan said certain groups are being targeted. Watch. If you're a parent attending a school board meeting, you're a pro-lifer praying at a clinic, or you're a Catholic simply going to mass, you are a target of the government, target of the FBI. That's not good. What are we going to do about this? As we know, parents speaking at school board meetings have been labeled domestic terrorists by the FBI. But, of course, Democrats won't admit that. My colleagues on the far right are on a mission to attack, discredit, and ultimately dismantle the FBI. This is defund the police on steroids. You're engaging in the self-promotion of your new book that's about to be released. And what great timing to be on TV and in Congress right before your book tour starts. In Texas, we would just say that this is just a lot of hot air um, blowing here, and it ain't a whistleblower. Ah, oh, hot air like in that Chinese spy balloon. That's fun. Today's hearing comes just three days after the Durham report slammed the FBI's Trump-Russia probe. So is it time to shut down the whole bureau? Joining me now to discuss 2024 Republican presidential candidate and celebrated author Vivek Ramaswamy is here. Hi, Vivek. How are you? It's good to see you, Kennedy. How are you? Uh, great to see you. Did you find these three whistleblowers to be credible? I did. I think that they actually spoke honestly. And I think that this is an FBI that has an agenda and an axe to grind. They're treating their internal whistleblowers in the same way that they treat political dissent amongst the American public as hostile. And I think that when you have an agency that is so corrupt, so politicized, I don't think you can reform that top down anymore. I think there's one answer left for the FBI. You shut it down. And that is what I've committed to do if I'm elected as president, is that we can't just tinker around the edges. This is a bureaucracy that cannot fix itself. It is so corrupt that just as at the local level, you have local police and local prosecutors without an agency sitting in between. Mm -hmm. At the federal level, you have federal marshals, you have U.S. marshals, and you have the DOJ. You don't need an FBI sitting in between either. And I think this is far more pragmatic than we make it out to be. It's what the next president needs to do. Yeah, I don't agree that it's defund the police. In fact, I, I tend to agree with you that we already have so many federal law enforcement agencies that uh, the FBI has become redundant, but a politicized FBI trained against its citizens, that is uncalled for. And, and I think we do have to have a conversation about what we expect from law enforcement, from federal law enforcement, and are they usurping power from local law enforcement, which is having the toughest time of all. So I, I think you can look at all of these arenas where the federal government has been weaponized. So if you were president, what would you do about it? Obviously, you have to work with Congress. How do you make your case? Well, I actually, I actually disagree with that, Kennedy. I think the presidential reorganization powers, if you run the executive branch of the government, Article 2 vests you with the authority to run the executive branch of the government. The people who we elect to run the government and the executive branch ought to be the ones actually running the executive branch. That's the president, not the bureaucratic state that sits underneath. You know, even just from a case of efficiency, the DEA and the FBI pursue drug cases in parallel. Mm -hmm. This makes no sense. So just from the standpoint of efficiency and spending, it's already sprawling in a way that's wrong for the American taxpayer. But when you have a bureaucracy that shouldn't exist, it then finds things to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't think this is a partisan point either, Kennedy. This is the same FBI that tried to actually pressure and threaten Martin Luther King Jr. into committing suicide, and denied Elvis. him a concealed don't carry permit. Elvis. So over the last 60 years, 
the left and the right could actually agree on this. You know, this is okay, so actually we, we not talk that a lot partisan about, of a point if we, we see it that We talk a lot way. about the left and the right, but there are a lot of libertarians who watch the show. And what is your pitch yeah. to them? They want the government out of their lives. They look at the pandemic. They look at, you know, potentially 87,000 new IRS agents. They work hard. Their money is taken from them. And the government lords so much power over them. So what is your pitch to libertarians? My pitch to libertarians is let's end the administrative state. That's actually how the government itself extends its tentacles through that fourth branch of government. Read the Constitution. There's three branches of government, not four. Yet it is the unaccountable fourth branch of government that wields the most power today. So if you're a libertarian, what do you want? You want the government getting out of your business so that you can mind your own. Mm -hmm. The vehicle that the government uses to do it is that alphabet soup. And I will shut it down. You can't tame the beast. Yes, exactly. The three-letter agencies, we have to shut them down. FBI to IRS to Department of Education, that is what it means to restore the power of our constitutional republic rather than this managerial technocracy that runs the show today. I'm I'm fine with that. I despise technocracies. And I have to say, my Uncle John has never donated to a presidential candidate. And and he texted me to let me know that he was so impressed uh, by some of the appearances that you have made recently and your comportment that he is, for the first time in his life, considering donating to your cause. So thank you for coming on the show. This is for Uncle John. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate that. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a good fan. I appreciate him. Yeah. Thank you. So now, meanwhile, the Republican presidential primary field, it's growing by the day. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis expected to launch his 2024 campaign next week. Polling has President Trump leading the field by several dozen points. But could an underdog steal the show? Vivek, what do you do to out Trump Trump? and push DeSantis and Nikki Haley and Mike Pence out of the picture. So I'm not a political analyst. I'm running based on speaking truth. And I'll tell you this, Kennedy, I would rather speak truth at every step and lose this election than map out some political snakes and ladders to winning. But what I see on the ground in places like Iowa and New Hampshire is that's exactly what voters want. I think the debate stage is key. I think that we as a party need to focus a lot more on the what and the why. What do we stand for and why do we stand for it instead of bickering over the who? We do too much of that in the Republican Party. We need to focus on the actual agenda. I think the debate stage is going to be crucial for that. I'm looking forward to seeing all my fellow candidates in this field on that debate stage. And then I think Iowa and New Hampshire are pretty important. I think we have a very good chance of doing well in New Hampshire. There was a poll that just came out earlier today. We haven't even spent that much money in New Hampshire, and I think a lot of those voters already appear to be quite receptive to my message. Well, you're, and so pulling, I think it's higher, still very you're pulling higher than Mike Pence, uh, which is very interesting because obviously yeah. he was the vice president uh, under a president who is still very popular with many members of the Republican Party. But, you know, you are going to have to take on Donald Trump at some point. How do you do that? Because you, you yeah. might say you don't want to deal with the who, but he is the who. So I'm going to the case I make to the people is we're not running from something. We are running to something, our vision of what it means to be American. And I'm taking the America first agenda further than Donald Trump ever did. He did talk about draining the swamp. But when it came to the Department of Education, he put a nice enough person on top of it, Betsy DeVos. I've said I would actually shut it down. He talked about building the wall. I said I would use our own military to secure our own southern border instead of securing somebody else's border halfway around the world. I've also said that I would end things like affirmative action, which a president can end by executive order because it started by executive order. And I pushed Trump's people on why they didn't do it. They said that was a political hill they didn't want to die on. Mm. And so the lesson, Kennedy, is this. I think we can go further than Trump did if it's not based on vengeance and grievance, but based on first principles and moral authority. I think we go further with the America first agenda itself. Mm -hmm. The last president who tied it to the why the principles was Ronald Reagan. I see an opportunity to do what Reagan did in 1980. I'm intending to do in 2024 with a landslide election that unites this country and revives our national soul. Do you think you'd be a better president than my sexy boyfriend, Ulysses S. Grant? You know, I, he puts up some some big competition for me, so I'm not going to compare myself to Grant. Okay. But I would say that in, in the modern era, I think Reagan sets the high bar. I'd like to be I'd like to clear the high bar set by Reagan. That'll be aspirational. Enough <laughs> I didn't for me. know it was a high jump competition. All right. I, I like the way you're talking, Vivek. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good seeing you. Coming up, 